In this project video, let's learn how to set up Prowler to push findings to Security Hub in AWS. A few months back, I hosted a webinar with Victoria Shetenko, who's a security engineer and web app pen tester, because she created this project that automated the entire process. And this walkthrough follows her project with just a few small modifications. Okay, so to build this out, we need to use four AWS services. The first one is gonna be Security Hub. The second is gonna be Amazon S3, which we'll use to store our findings. We'll use Code Build in order to run Prowler without needing to manage servers. And then optionally, you can use EventBridge, which will allow you to run this on a schedule. I say optionally because I'm not gonna show you how to set that up in this video. If you need help with that, let me know. Otherwise, it'll be a nice little homework exercise for you to complete. Instead, we'll focus on the other parts. Now, the steps that we will take in this video will include number one, enabling the Security Hub Prowler integration. Number two, grabbing the project code and configuring it. Number three, setting up code build. And then number four, verifying that it all works. Okay, let's get started. First things first, let's head over to Security Hub. If you don't already have it enabled in your account, you'll need to do that first. There should be a 30-day free trial, but typically to effectively use Security Hub, you need to also enable AWS Config, and that also has a free trial. This is entirely up to you as it should actually still work fine without AWS Config for this specific use case, since we're not gonna use that service. But usually keep in mind, the two services really need to work together. Now enabling both of those services is super easy and I have other content showing how, so I'll assume that you've taken care of that part. But again, if you need help, let me know in the comments below. So once you have it enabled, then you need to head over to integrations in the left menu. After that, go ahead and filter for Prowler, scroll down a little bit, and then click on Accept Findings. You can see the template for the permissions necessary to receive those findings, and then you can go ahead and click on Accept, and it will change it to this green status with a green bar up here, which means we're good to go. That step is complete and super easy to do. The next step is to go ahead and download the project code. I've got two links here that you might be interested in. The first one is the one that's gonna be our starting point. This is what Victoria created. This is her repository. So this is what we'll go ahead and download. I'll click on the green code button and then download zip. If you have GitHub installed, you can instead clone the repository or whatever you prefer, but downloading zip is easy. So we'll do that. And then after downloading this project, I'll switch over to another repository. This is just one that I've created as basically a clone of her project, but this is gonna be our final step. Like I said, we're gonna configure this code and I'm gonna walk you through it. But if you wanna double check or compare to what I have at the very end, then this is gonna be the, the end project basically. Going back to this project after you've downloaded it, go ahead and open it up in your favorite code editor. When you first open this project, you'll notice multiple different files. We have a build spec, calculate compliance, ENV example, extract percentage, multi-account scan, and then a readme. I do recommend pausing here and just taking a couple seconds to read through the readme file, but I'll also give you a rough breakdown of what's going on. The most important file is gonna be the buildspec.yaml file, so let's go ahead and start there. This is the file that you upload to AWS and then configure within CodeBuild. And CodeBuild will look for this file and will then use it to build your projects. So we can see here we have a version to start and then we have multiple different phases. We have an install phase, a build phase, and then a post build phase. Within the install phase, we have a runtime version of Python 3.11. So this is telling CodeBuild, hey, this is a Python project, or I want you to use Python, and specifically, I want you to use Python 3.11, and I want you to run these commands. First, we're gonna echo installing Prowler and dependencies, so this is just informing you through the logs. Then, we'll actually install Prowler by using pip3 install Prowler, and then we'll just run a Prowler V. Again, this is gonna output in logs, that way you can check the version of it, and you can see what's being used in logs after the fact. Then for our build stage, we again have some commands, starting off with some echo commands, and then the magic is gonna happen when we execute Prowler. But you'll notice here that we're executing Prowler using a dynamic environment variable called Prowler options. So we will need to configure that and set it. And then we can see here they added true to prevent the build from failing due to Prowler scan results. So after the build stage, after we've executed Prowler, then we'll move on to the post build stage. And here we'll do quite a bit of stuff. 
First of all, we will upload files, the output files from Prowler to Amazon S3 using AWS S3 CP command, which is a CLI command. Then we will run a Python script called calculate compliance on the outputted Prowler file. After that, they have a curl request here for Slack webhook URL. So essentially the way this would work is after Prowler runs and executes, then we wanna notify through Slack that the Prowler scan results are ready and available, and it actually gives you the direct link to log in to Security Hub. This is definitely nice to have. I highly recommend doing something like this, whether it's Slack or SNS, you definitely wanna have some sort of notification. But for the sake of this video, I'm actually gonna delete this line entirely. I'm not gonna be using Slack and we can also get rid of this comment that's related to that. I'm also, as an additional modification, I'm going to remove this line here for the Python calculate compliance.py. I was actually having some issues when trying to run this. I think it's broken since it was uploaded originally, but also Prowler does a pretty good job of showing you the calculations of compliance already out of the box. So I don't feel like this is strictly required, it's a nice addition, but uh, let's go ahead and get rid of it. So we'll remove all of this actually, because that was related to calculating compliance as well. So now what we're left with is we're uploading files to S3, we're echoing a few statements, and then we're issuing our Prowler command. If you want to though, you can still check those other files. For example, the Python file for calculating compliance, you can see exactly what it attempts to do. And then we also have extract percentage.py. I don't see this being referenced anywhere in the code, so I think they added it after the fact, uh, but uh, if you want to try and add it in, go for it. I just exclude it there. Then we have a env examples.txt file. This shows you which environment variables are either expected or can be added in and how you would configure them. So this is a good way to, to view some examples of how you can set those environment variables, which we'll do later. Then we have a file for multi-account scan configuration. If you plan on using this multi-account, then I would recommend looking at this. We're doing single account here, so I'm gonna be skipping that step, but that's there if you need it. Okay, so that's basically the gist of our project. Because I really only need this buildspec.yaml file, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and zip this up. So I've got my directory here, and I'll right click this and compress it. You can do something similar if you're on Windows, doesn't matter. And then we could do, we can name this whatever we want, really doesn't matter either. I'll just do code files, for example. So codefiles.zip, and it just contains this. You can zip the other files as well if you want to. I'm just not doing that because they're not going to be used in my project, so I don't really care. Again, personal choice. But now that we've reviewed the code and we've made a couple of modifications, let's go ahead and upload it to code build. However, for us to do that, we need to first navigate over to Amazon S3 because that's where I'm going to upload this archive file. And I also need an outputs bucket or a bucket that we'll use to output our files. So let's go ahead and create the first bucket. And for this, I'll just name it something like Prowler Code Build Cyber. Of course, you wanna use a unique name, so choose whatever you want. I don't need to make any other modifications. If you're in production though, make sure you, you review. And actually I forgot, I already used this when I was testing it. So as you can see, it definitely needs to be unique, otherwise it's not gonna work. So I'll just add a dash two. And then I'll do the same thing, but this time for the outputs bucket. So we'll do Prowler scan reports cyber two. And then again, go to create bucket. Like I said, if you're in production, review these settings, make sure they're following best practices but for my demo, I'll go quickly through that. After creating my bucket, I'll go ahead and go in the first one we created, and then I will upload that codefiles.zip file. So drag and drop it in there, or you can add files this way, and then click on upload and close that out. And we can now see our object within this bucket. Okay, now let's go ahead and navigate over to our code build service. And then you can click on getting started if you want and then create a project there or you can go to build projects and create project there. Really doesn't matter, it's gonna be the same end result. I'm gonna go ahead and call this project Prowler Scans. And then let's go through a few of the settings. The first one is gonna be the source. So click on this and you'll see we can use GitHub as a source or Bitbucket, GitLab, whatever. I'm gonna use Amazon S3 and then I will use that bucket that we just created. Within that bucket, I'm looking for the object key of code-files.zip. That's the one that we just uploaded. That's the one that has our buildspec.yaml. 
Then if I scroll down, we can look through. I'm gonna use defaults for pretty much everything we see here. And then I need to expand the additional configuration and then look at environment variables. So remember that env examples file? Well, this is really where that comes into play. The first one is gonna be bucket report. And so that's gonna be equals to, so the value is gonna be prowler scan reports dash cyber dash two. And then I'll add another one. This one's gonna be prowler options. And this one's gonna be equal to the command we wanna issue through prowler. So imagine prowler, AWS, etc. except we don't need the prowler command because it's already in our build spec file. So we'll do AWS dash dash compliance. And then I'll just run CIS 1.4. They have many others you can choose from. That's the one that we'll use. And then dash dash security dash hub. We'll set the region. By the way, the security hub part there is telling it to send findings to security hub. Then we wanna set our region to US East one. If you're in US East one, otherwise change that. And then log level to error, just to get more information if something goes wrong. All right, finally, I'll do multi account scan equals false. I'm not sure that's actually required, but uh, we'll add it in there just in case. These can be plain text because these are not secrets, so we're fine with that. And then for our build spec, instead of inserting build commands, we want to use our build spec file, which is going to be called buildspec.yaml. So just like that. All right, so we've got those two things configured. Let me see, what else do we need? We can leave logs enabled. We do need to create a service role. Where is that again? Let's see. There's a lot on this page, so it's kind of hard to see, but if we close this out here, we'll see that we can create a new service role in our account because we've not used code build before. And so it's gonna create this role name right here, which we're fine with, and we'll make some modifications to in just a second. So this looks good. I don't think we need to modify anything else. Nope, okay. So let's go ahead and create our build project. So we'll take a few seconds, give it just a moment. And once it's done, you'll see this green success message. Now what we need to do is we need to modify our service role because it's not correctly configured for our use case. There are two permissions or policies that were added here, but those policies are not gonna have what we need for Prowler to succeed. So instead, let's click on add permissions and then attach policies. The first thing we need to select is the security audit manage policy. This is for Prowler to be able to succeed. And then we also need it to upload stuff to S3. And so we'll do Amazon S3 full access. I don't like this here. I'm just doing this because I'm trying to go through this kind of fast. You don't want to use S3 full access though. You'd want to specify that outputs bucket, the second bucket that we created. So uh, after, this, uh, after you're done watching this video, make sure you follow the principle of least privilege. But for now, this will work fine. Let's go ahead and click on add permissions. And we now have four policies, but we're still not done. We need to go ahead and add a couple more inline policies because otherwise we're gonna be missing some, uh, some pretty critical permissions for Prowler to execute. These are available on GitHub. They're already pre-made and pre-created by the maintainers of this project. The first one that I'll go ahead and grab is going to be at this URL right here under Prowler permissions, Prowler additions policy. What we can do is we can grab it raw and then command A, command C, just to copy it over. And then I'll switch over to JSON and then replace everything in there and then click on next. And all we need to do here is just name it whatever we wanna name it. For example, I could do Prowler additions, view an overview of permissions defined and then create policy and do that one more time, create another inline policy, switch over to visual and this time it's gonna be much shorter and it will look like this. So same repository, but a different file down here. And we can copy and paste this guy right here into here. And that's to push over to Security Hub. Click on next. And then for this, we can just name it Prowler Security Hub and then confirm and create. All right, and so now our permissions are good to go. This is what Prowler will use when it's executing. We should be fine. If we have any issues, we'll come back and fix those afterwards. We are basically ready to start our build and to make sure that it works and then to troubleshoot if it doesn't. So back in code build, click on start build and let's see what happens. We'll see the status in progress. And then this is trailing our logs that are also be being sent to CloudWatch. And we'll take a look at that in just a little bit. 
but wait a few seconds and then watch it do its thing. We can see our echo commands, right? Running, installing Prowler and dependencies, pip3 install Prowler. That's everything we had in our build spec file. So, so far, so good. I'm gonna fast forward and let it finish. It'll just take a couple minutes. I'll be right back. All right, after a few minutes, I don't know, three, four, five minutes, something like that, give it some time to finish. But eventually you should see the Prowler art here displayed. That's a good sign. Basically, we can start from around here where it says running command, running in a single account, and then running Prowler as Prowler with our options, et cetera, et cetera. And then it shows you that it's injecting the environment variables from Prowler options, and it's in instead injecting that as our command. So Prowler, AWS, compliance, you know, everything that we wrote out, and then the role. It looks like I did not set the Prowler role environment variable. That doesn't matter because if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see that it's using the AWS credentials below. So it's grabbing our service role that we can view from the caller identity ARN. That's that service role that we configured with those new permissions added to it. It is successfully running in US East One within our account, and it's using the default credential that this, uh, this build project has access to through that service role. So we're good to go. Then we can see it executed 65 checks, which are the checks from CIS 1.4. And then after that, we have an overview of results with about 44% failed, 51% passed. Then we can see the scan results by service and by status, as well as by either critical, high, medium, low, or muted. Then we have the detailed results that were outputted by Prowler, and we've uploaded those to S3, and we can see that down here. So quite a bit of information. Go ahead and take your time scrolling through. Take a look at the commands that we ran to upload stuff to S3. And then once it's done, it echoes done and we're good to go. If we scroll all the way back up, we'll see that our build succeeded. If we now navigate over to Security Hub, we could go over to Findings and then we can filter. So we can set the product name. Whoops, get rid of this. Then set product name over here equals or is Prowler, and it will filter for just those findings. We can then look at the severity, or we can filter by severity, by finding name, or flow status, region, account ID, etc. But all these are going to be Prowler findings. As you can see, we have quite a few in this account, a lot of mediums. As you can see, there's quite a few mediums. We also have some highs. So we'd want to take a look at that, right? Like I said, we can set it by severity. So we can start with the critical, then work our way down and make sure that all these are relevant to our account. But there it is. You've successfully pushed findings over to Security Hub. We could also go to Amazon S3, and then we can scroll down to our reports bucket, and we'll see this directory as well as that directory that has our original output files that were uploaded. We can head over to CloudWatch as well, and we'll be able to see our build logs just like the ones that we saw in CloudWatch. So we go to Log Groups, then we'll click on the one that's related to our code build, and then we'll have our log stream we can click on, and that's gonna be everything that we looked at, including those echoes and the commands and everything else. So there you go, that's our project in a nutshell. And even though we're technically done with this video, we've achieved our objective, there are a few more action items that I would recommend that you complete if you plan on using this in a production environment. So I'll let you complete these on your own. Let me know if you need help, especially in the Discord community. I'll be happy to help you out. Number one, you need to update permissions to make them least privilege and consider creating a separate role for Prowler to assume instead of having to use the service role. Although that part is optional, you don't technically have to do that, but I like to keep it separate. Then you can set up notifications through Slack or SNS. After that, go ahead and set up EventBridge to run this on a schedule. So EventBridge would call code build on a schedule, like every month, for example. After that, if you want, you can also set up dashboards with QuickSight to display this in graphs or display the results in graphs. And then finally, but very importantly, you'd want to turn this into infrastructure as code so that you can use that to deploy to a production environment instead of having to use ClickOps, which is what we did in this video. So I hope that this video and project was helpful. And if it was, please let me know in the comments below. And most importantly, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.